Guinevere, beautiful maiden, queen of Camelot, deceitful seductress. The story of Guinevere and Arthur has been told countless times and in many different orientations, but one thing remains the same throughout each version. Guinevere is always depicted as the manipulating adulteress who deceives Arthur in some way or another. In the most well-known version, she is known for her love affair with Sir Lancelot, one of King Arthur's most trusted knights of the round table. This affair spirals out of control and ultimately leads to the downfall of Camelot. In most modern adaptations, Guinevere is betrothed to Arthur shortly after he became the King of Camelot. When Arthur's famous Knights of the Round Table group takes form later in his career, Lancelot becomes one of the most trusted and noble warriors, and Guinevere falls immediately in love with him. Lancelot and Guinevere commence with a lengthy and passionate affair, which Arthur does not become aware of until one night at a banquet. He notices that neither of the two are there at the feast, and they are discovered by the two sons of King Lot, Arthur's brother-in-law and ally. Although reluctant, Arthur sentences Guinevere to burn at the stake as punishment for her adultery. Lancelot, learning of his lover's demise, arrives and tries to rescue the queen. This sends Arthur into a rage, and he and Lancelot commence in a war. When Lancelot leaves to fight King Arthur, he leaves Guinevere in the care of Mordred, who is, depending on the version, Arthur's son or nephew. Mordred's plan is to take Guinevere as his wife and take the crown from King Arthur. In some versions, Guinevere agrees to Mordred's marriage proposal, but in most, she refuses and runs away to hide in the Tower of London and takes refuge in a convent. When Arthur learns of Mordred's plans, he returns to Camelot and kills Mordred. However, he receives serious wounds and must be taken to the Isle of Avalon to be healed. Taking the advantage of this opportunity, Guinevere and Lancelot meet each other for the last time, and then she returns to the convent for the rest of her life. The origination of this glorious tale has been in and out of debate for centuries. The earliest literary references to Arthur came from the Welsh and Breton sources. Some speculate that the character of King Arthur is actually a pre galfridian tradition rather than a changeable story or text. One of the most famous Welsh poetic references to Arthur comes in the form of the heroic death songs known as Ye Gwydadyn, supposedly written by the 6th century poet named Anirian. Another man by the name of Taliesin, a poet who lived in the 6th century, also refers to Arthur, although these are all probably date from the 8th century and 12th centuries. Finally, Arthur is mentioned numerous times in the Welsh Triads, a collection of short summaries of the Welsh tradition. In these summaries, it can be noted that the court begins to embody legendary Britain as a whole, although it is not clear as to whether Arthur was in fact a king by the time Colwich and Owen and the Triads were written, he had become famed as the overlord of Wales, Cornwall and the North. The creator of the familiar literary persona of Arthur was Geoffrey of Monmouth, who wrote Historia Regum Britannia in the 1130s. This was also the first narrative Arthur's life. How much of this narrative was Geoffrey's own invention is open to debate. The story of King Arthur and Guinevere can be told from countless different perspectives and probably already has been. Since there has been never been proof of whether King Arthur was a fictional character or a real person, writers and historians have been able to stretch and twist certain aspects of the original plotline without making the story unrecognizable. For example, in many versions, Guinevere remains childless her whole life, but in other versions, chiefly Perla Vaz in the alliterative Morth d'Arthur, she actually accepts Mordred's marriage proposal and has two children with him. 
Also, in other versions, the character Loho appears to be Guinevere's son. Another example of differing details is who abducts Guinevere. In some versions, she is abducted by Mordred, sometimes multiple times. In other versions, she is stolen by Melwaz, the king of the summer country, and held prisoner as, at his stronghold at Glastonbury. And still, in other versions, she is kidnapped by the character named Malignant. Here, the queen's rescuer is not Arthur, but Lancelot. In the stor German story, Dio Crone, Guinevere's brother, Grimm, kidnaps her and attempts to kill her for refusing to marry Gessiwen, who claims to be her rightful husband. It doesn't really matter who Guinevere is kidnapped by, but the theme of Guinevere's abduction remains throughout the whole, all of the versions. Whether Guinevere is depicted as a resourceful woman whose immense beauty and intelligence is highlighted, or a vindictive adulteress who is portrayed in a very negative light throughout the story, she will remain as almost as timeless as King Arthur himself.